What's up everybody? Um, we are going to talk a little bit about wiring a multi plus inverter charger. Uh, this is a 48 volt multi plus unit. It's the 48 3035. Uh, but most of the multi pluses from Victron Energy are very similar. Um, and in particular, we're going to focus on the 120 volt AC terminals. Um, the, tw the DC terminals in this case, 48 volt DC, but yours might be 12 volt or 24 volt. Um, that's pretty straightforward. You're going to have a negative and a positive coming from your bus bar, your links distributor, what have you. Um, it's going to be fused according to the manual. And these are just like M8 or 5 16 inch studs. So pretty simple. Uh, where people kind of get stuck on these is the spring loaded terminals for the 120 volt AC. Um, so basically we have an AC input terminal block. This is typically wired up to like shore power, something along those lines. And then we have an AC out one and an AC out two terminal block. Um, in most cases, you're gonna be using AC out number one, which includes the power assist feature and so forth. So these are spring loaded, you know, they're not, you know, more traditional uh, screw type terminal. So the first thing you're going to have to do is put ferrules on your wire. So these things I'll show you, we're going to crimp these onto the wire. And these are critical because the way these spring terminals work is you just push the terminal into the spring loaded uh, connection point, and then it's going to grab, but it will not grab bare wire. You'll need the ferrule. And then the other mistake that a lot of people make is they assume that you have to use the tiny screwdriver to press the release tab or button or whatever you want to call it in order to get the wire into the terminal. But that's not the case. To put it in, you're simply going to push it into the terminal with a ferrule. And then you're only going to use the release button to, you guessed it, release the terminal. So a couple of things to keep in mind when you're shopping for ferrules. They come in insulated and non-insulated. Uh, we prefer the non-insulated for this purpose because um, it allows us to uh, push the ferrule up into the terminal and actually have a little bit of the wire insulation uh, also it, uh, up into that uh, cavity. Uh, so it's nice and insulated and isolated. Um, the insulated versions uh, don't work as well in this particular context. And uh, we like a crimp length or a nose of around 10 to maybe 12 to 15 millimeters. Uh, this is a 12 millimeter. So let's go ahead and get those crimped on. Okay, here we are. Um, we've crimped on the ferrules. And our next step is to uh, get these into the terminals here. I've gone ahead and taken the little rubber boot grommet and opened it up to the right diameter for our uh, insulation here for this wire that's going to pass through. So let's get this going. Right. Okay. So um, what we're going to do is take the white uh, neutral and connect it to this one with the N on, and this is all AC out number one. Then we're gonna take the green ground connected to this middle one with the PE. And then we're gonna take the black hot or line connected to the one with the L. Um, and uh, what we're doing basically is just taking these uh, ferrules and pushing them, up, pushing them up far enough into the terminal that the uh, spring loaded terminal is going to grab it. Uh, and again, we do not need to use a tiny screwdriver to push the release button because you only need that when you're removing the terminals and some pliers make this a lot easier. So let's get started. Here. All right. You can see you got to shove it up there pretty far. Um, we're past the ferrule. So uh, actually the insulation of the wire is at the end of the terminal. So uh, we had to push that in there pretty far to get it 
to uh, lock into place. And of course you can check that by pulling on the wire. It should definitely be secure. Let's move on to the ground connection. Good and secure. And the last one is the L or the line, the hot, which is our black wire. You know, this definitely is not a fun project. It definitely takes some sort of finagling to get them in there. And that's that. Voila. Before we put the um, this little uh, wire guide back into place. I'll show you how you would remove one of these terminals. This is where the tiny screwdriver and the lever release or release button comes into place. And you basically have to push the screwdriver in there and then you're gonna actually push it down to release the spring. A couple of hands make this easier and some pliers. So screwdriver has been inserted and now we're just going to push down and pull out the wire. So that's how you release it. Again, not necessary to insert. We'll go ahead and reinsert that one. And once it's in place, it should not come out unless you do the release procedure. Okay, so um, at this point, we would go ahead and secure the wires down uh, with the little um, wire guide that comes with the multi plus. Um, but before we do that, I'll show you how the release comes into play. So let's say for whatever reason, we're doing maintenance on the system and we need to remove this. That's when the little lock or button comes in. So again, pliers make that easier, but you're basically gonna just push to release and then pull the wire out. Okay, now that, uh, let's say we're done with the wiring, we'll go ahead and put this wire guide strap back in with the two extremely tiny nuts. That's it, hopefully that's helpful. Uh, we see a lot of people struggling when they don't use ferrules, when they don't use long enough ferrules, or when they try to use the release lever when inserting the wires.